advice pieces that I give that are unconventional. I have a great peachy interview for you today. I am down at Bradley Mountain. This is a manufacturing company located in East Village, San Diego. I'm with the owner, Tyler Axtell. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> Great. So there's a group of six of them that work here now. You're welcome to come on by and come in, actually shop here and look at all the products and how they're made, learn about them, ask questions, and be inspired by Tyler. But if you can't do that for now, just watch the video. I know there's some construction going on in the background, so please don't be put off by that. There's a lot of important information that we get to learn today. So keep your ears tight and close to the uh, speaker and stick with us for this one. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I started the company in my garage. I was living in Ocean Beach, San Diego area in 2012, and I started designing wallets and bags and little things just for me and my friends out of leather um, and that start, started to just take off. Um, yeah, from there basically we got featured in a few um, big retail uh, blogs and then um, I was sharing the story on Instagram uh, just as I was making things and then kind of grew my business online um, and now we're in this space uh, almost eight years later and we're still doing it. Most of the products that we make now are bags and jackets. That's kind of what we're known for. Um, we uh, launched the company with wallet, a wallet, a journal, and a leather sleeve for like a mason jar for a coffee. And um, those were the things that really, kind of different approach to those things, um, really, Put us on the map and then yeah and then bags have really become the main focus that we make here so we make everything out of leather waxed cotton um, duck canvas which is made in the america and um, the leather is also tanned here uh, it's american leather um, and we try to focus on american made high quality long lasting goods and so you're going to pay a higher price for it but it's going to last you 10 times longer than you know what you might buy at Target or wherever. So um, really the focus for us is durability and inspiration. We just want our products to inspire people. Yeah, being, being a manufacturer is such a fancy, it feels like such an official word. I went from being someone that loved making stuff in my garage um, to, to then actually running a company. I have workers comp, I have liability insurance, I pay all my employees, um, the, the employment tax and all that stuff. There's a lot of things that go into it. And, and then I have to have a, a garment manufacturing license through the state of California. And so there's a few things that make it um, difficult and there's a lot of hoops to jump through to do it. And so becoming a business that does manufacturing versus just a sole proprietor, just me and my garage doing it, has been a huge journey and a really challenging journey for me. Um, and so I think, you know, what I do and where I do it doesn't quite fit. A lot of the brands that we um, are, are similar to, you know, young 20 to 30 something people who are making goods and trying to live that same standard of life are out in the Midwest or in Texas or Idaho. And so I am working up against some things, um, but this is where I'm from and I love it here. And there's so much um, for me here and, and for my business. So I think those things are worth fighting for. Good. Yeah, so for us, the I'm not a salesman. I don't feel like a salesman. I've never, that's never been my skill set is like convincing someone that they need something. And so I've always relied on the products and the quality and the style and the design of what we make to sell themselves. Obviously, you know, you have to 
get it in front of people. But once we tell our story and we tell people why we're doing it and, and that we want it to improve people's lives, we want it to last a long time and hand it down to your children. Um, beyond that, I just want to get to know my customers. I want to get to know people, what they're all about. One of the biggest things uh, we talk about is living adventurously. And so we, um, a lot of times just ask people, you know, what's your dream trip? What's the thing that you want to do? What are you dreaming for? And then maybe a, buying a bag fits into that along the way, you know, they take it with them. But I try not to focus too much on telling someone why they need our bags, because usually those people are less likely to come back. There's, there's, there's something so powerful about the people that really get it and they really want it already and they come in and they're, they're the kind of customers that are here for life. And so really, for me, making that connection with them, um, getting to know them um, has really gone a long way. So, I mean, one of the things that we try to look for is other types of products that fall in line with our customers and what we do, you know, like it's manly, it's durable, and it's American made. And so, you know, we try to think of fun things. One of them is, you know, maybe working with a brewery. Um, San Diego has tons of local breweries and I have some friends in the industry. So we've made merch and stuff for some tasting rooms. And then, but we also thought it'd be cool to like make a beer um, with, you know, maybe our logo or a story behind that, you know, like hiking beer, or whatever it is. We haven't figured it out yet, but um, I want to be open to, you know, trying those things. Collaborations have been a really big part of my company. Um, what's cool about being a craftsman is I have a trade that I bring to the table and I meet, I get to meet a lot of people that have a different trade and we get along great. And so we've designed a lot of really cool products here that were that collaboration. And so, I mean, one is these chef's knives that we made with a knife maker and we, we like helped design it and he made them for us. And so, and then we are able to sell those. They're made here in San Diego. We have um, maps of the US that we sell that is a collaboration with a guy that lives in Barrio Logan uh, or his shops there. And he does like these beautiful museum quality print maps. And so we've done some partnerships with him. And so there's countless stories of ways we've partnered with local craftsmen, people who figured out something really special, like what I do, but different, that um, has, and, and then cross promoting that, you know, is huge. So they're posting on social media about it, I'm posting about it, and we're, all, we're bringing our customer base together for that partnership. And that's been a huge way that I've grown my audience and my customer base. There's a lot of power in developing a story. And what I mean by a story are, is like, we have a jacket that we did over um, the fall that was made out of military surplus canvas. So it's re, you know, recycled, repurposed canvas, looks really cool. It's off of like the line um, where they were manufacturing um, pants for soldiers. And so we pulled that fabric together, we designed a really cool jacket, we made special buttons for it, and we only made 25 of them. And so, and those sold really well, and people loved them. And I think, and we did a whole blog and, and like a whole thing, a video about it. And that really engaged our faithful customers, the people that really pay attention. You know, not every single one of our customers watched the video, but the people that really pay attention to it, I think value it and they can tell that we're putting thought into things. And so I think our limited projects give us an opportunity to show how much attention to detail we put into our, prod, you know, our products. As a company, we diversify everything. We, you know, we don't just make bags. We make bags and jackets and candles and that is something we have, A, it's really fun, and B, 
it's something that I have to do to survive here in California. Um, that's just one of the ways we've been able to grow and stay in business is offering a lot of different things so that we have repeat customers. Because if you buy one of our bags, you don't need another one for 40 years. So maybe you buy, you come back and buy a jacket. So that gives, you know, that gives us longevity. And then we have multiple sales channels. We sell direct to our customers um, here in the store. They can come, we're on Google Maps, people can come find us. Um, and then we sell online um, and we push that through our Instagram and our Facebook and Google marketing. Um, and we've you know, had to figure out how to do all that. And then uh, in, in addition to the online store, which is, that's our biggest revenue. I mean, that's everything the online store. But we also do um, events to bring people in to bring awareness, um, concerts or sales or things like that, local events. And then we sell to retailers all around the world. So we have a Japanese distributor um, that they're, they're helping us get into stores in Japan. And then we have, we work directly with um, a bunch of stores in Canada and Australia and in Italy. And so we have, we, that's been another way we've grown. You know, we don't make nearly as much profit when we do that because it's a wholesale business, but wholesale has been um, a big part of, you know, growing our manufacturing. Yeah, so, I mean, technology in the craft is, is funny because it's not, it's actually an old trade and it's a it's a, a trade sewing and leatherworking that most of the best machines are really old or they've been made the same way for decades. And so I'm not typically I'm not looking for new technology in the craft. I'm looking for new technology on the marketing side and the sales side. That's the part that is really changing. And I luckily, you know, I started seven or eight years ago, so I kind of started already in this like new era of marketing, social media, e-commerce, um, the way things are now. But even then, things have changed a lot um, in the time I've been in business. And so staying informed and, and paying attention to, you know, people are doing giveaways and that's one way people find new customers. But even the, in the way that people do, are doing giveaways on, over social media, that's been changing a lot. And so you could call that new tech, you know, just paying attention to how the, the trends and the technology is working or not working. You can dump a lot of money into social media and not get results. So there's, you know, that's where I focus on the new and the like learning new technology. And I'm always learning the trade. You know, I, I didn't grow up. I didn't get past the, uh, no one passed this down to me as a trade. I had to learn it on my own. And so I'm, I'm still learning a lot about what I do in the craft and design. And I've only been designing jackets for two years, so I have a long way to go and I, I have a lot of things I'm learning there. So, um, and I have tons of ideas about that. Yeah, I think something that keeps me inspired and keeps me designing new things is, I mean, one is just taking care of myself, stepping away. Um, I, t I like to travel. That's like a huge part of my values as a person and something we encourage as a brand is see the world, get exposed to new things. And so me and my wife try to leave the country once a year um, and just see something new um, and or visit a new city. And so I usually come back from those with tons of sketches or ideas. I'll see fashion that I hadn't seen before or eat food that I've never tried before. And that's just keeping myself exposed to things is so valuable and not staying locked in my little perspective of the world and my little, you know, what I think my business means to the world. I usually learn a lot too about what people think of my business where I travel. I'll tell them, you know, I'll either talk to them about it in the airport or, you know, I've been fortunate enough to meet some people that had heard of me traveling. And so it's cool to hear how far the message has gone and 
Um, but yeah, traveling is probably the biggest thing, way I stay inspired. Yeah. I, I mean, that's actually a big kind of way that we've grown our, our social media organically is, is taking pictures traveling and showing our bags around the world and actually trying to get our customers to send us those photos. Um, and that's one of the biggest ways we've, really that's what our whole identity is, is seeing our bags all over the world. Um, and so every time me and my wife travel, I, tr I try to take a couple fo photos of my bags in like a cool hotel or on a hike. Um, so yeah, we're always taking photos and sharing them. So I think the experience that I would, I want my customers to have and, and even other businesses that we work with um, to have is that there's integrity and that we're here to stay. We pay on time. We, we don't play any of those games. Um, that burn other businesses. And I've been burned many times. I understand how that, you know, people paying late invoices or, you know, we don't do any of that. And um, I'm proud of that. I think that that um, plays into my goal for the customer, which is they know they can come to us, they can get quality, they can always um, find the same thing. Um, they can come back and get the same experience. It's not gonna lose value. A lot of companies, as they grow, they, they start losing quality. And so, um, you know, as we've grown, I've tried to be really on top of maintaining quality, if not improving quality over time. Um, and then for the, the direct customer, the person that's actually buying the, the bags to use, I want them to come in and just feel like, you know, they can tackle the world, they can do anything they want with the, this, our bags on their back or our jacket on their back. and. Um, we just want to propel people forward in that, and so that's why we, you know, ask them what they want to do with their life or with traveling. And you know, we've had some really cool conversations along the way with people that have really opened up to us, and and they'll text us or, or email us photos of them hiking Machu Picchu with one of our bags, or you know, we've had a lot of those stories. So it's really cool being able to follow up and, and making that connection. Um, so it's always personal for me. The first piece of advice is trying not to be a perfectionist. And I think a lot of people praise perfectionism. But the problem is when you're a startup or you're trying to do something new or different, or maybe it's just new for you, um, a lot of people my age, at least in, in my world, they have these grandiose ideas. They want to become this, you know, whatever this thing is that they want to become and they, get, they never actually launch or they never actually get it off the ground because they get caught up in, you know, they get obsessed over like the logo and they spend way too long on the logo and then they, they spend way too long on trying to get their like campaigns going and, and you, have to, you have to do all that stuff but I think there's a lot to be said about getting started and just, just getting it going getting your day one started or your day two and um, I think perfectionism can slow people down and confuse people about what the goal is. The goal for me is to get to make bags and get them into people's hands and if I if I would have sat down and tried to make the perfect bag I never would have gotten started because I had to learn over time and I had to get you know get feedback from people and so I try to tell people who are trying to do something like this um, not to be too obsessive over making it perfect, but making it good and making it what you want it to be, but not worrying about how it looks to other people. Um, if, it, if it passes your checklist, I think that's at least a good starting place and then you can learn and grow. And the second piece of advice is how you listen to people's feedback. Um, I think it's really important to get feedback and I think that there's a lot of people that don't have any feedback and they think that they're just right about everything and that's really bad for a business. But I also think you can go too far and try to be creating exactly what your customer wants all the time and you can lose sight of what you're actually doing. And so you're just running around doing all these different things and you don't really have direction. 
And one of my favorite things, um, I got to hear Guy Kawasaki speak. He was part of Apple. He talked about one of the best design strategies that they had was just making the products they wanted to use and not worrying about what anyone thought about it. And so they just made the phone that they wanted to, to hold and use. And so um, I, I like to take that into what I do. You know, Do I like using the products I make? What don't I like about it? Maybe those are the things I need to change. Because there's a lot of people out there that they'll say nasty things. They'll say, you know, they'll attack you on social media. And, you know, if that's all you're getting, then you're probably <laughs> doing something wrong. But um, I think that we have to have a filter for those things and, and learn what to, what to listen to and maybe what to block out if it's not pushing you forward. Thank you so much, Tyler. Mm -hmm. I'll take your last words of advice here, right above our heads, to all you small business owners out there. Live adventurously, test ideas, don't try to be perfect, go for it, yeah? And stay inspired. Thank you. Thank you so much for today, yeah. that was great. And best of luck to you. Okay. <laughs> I don't even know if you can see me, I'm like out here. <laughs>